All right, cool. Let's move on to strategies. The really awesome thing about strategies is that they are one, super effective, and two, they require you to learn no new information whatsoever. That's right. Strategies will teach you how to approach SAT problems in the most effective way possible. They'll show you the hidden shortcuts and how not to get tricked up by trickster question designed to test you. We'll jump into our first strategy after this short comic break. <laughs> I love sharing these comics with you guys. But as promised, now it's time to go over an important math strategy. This strategy is for algebra questions only. The point of this strategy is to use the multiple choice format of the test to your advantage. If you think about it, they give you five answer choices on the sheet. And one of them must be the correct one. Whoa! So in other words, you know the answer is right there staring at you in the face. You just don't know which one. Well, at least not yet. But since you know the right answer is somewhere right in front of you, you can use this fact to your advantage. So instead of solving the question, why don't you test the answer choices to figure out which one is right? You're like Goldilocks when you're going to sip one porridge to see if it's right or not. If it's not right, then you'll sip on another one and so on until you find the one that is just right. Wow! Genius! You don't always have to solve the question, you just have to test the answer choices. Let me show you how to do this. You're going to test the answer choices and you're always going to start with C. Why C? Good question. Let's think about it. Look at this SAT question here and look closely at its answer choice set. The answers go up in ascending order with answer choice A having the lowest answer and answer choice E having the highest. Ah, so that's why we always start with C. Because it's always going to be the middle answer. By plugging in C first, you are first testing the middle answer. If it doesn't work because it's too small, then you can cross off C. And also you can cross off A and B. Wow, that's efficient. Well, what if C turns out to be too big? Well, then you could just cross off C as well as D and E. Cool. So that's why you start with the middle number first. So do you never need to solve another math problem again? Can you use this strategy on every question? No, that's the catch. Only use this strategy for algebra problems that have numerical numbers as their answer choice. So questions where you have numerical numbers in the answer choice where you otherwise would have had to use tricky complex algebra, those are the best sort of questions for this strategy. I think you're starting to get it, but practice, practice, practice is key, key, key. Let's try a couple practice problems together right now. So let's solve an SAT question together.
This time, instead of solving anything, we're going to Goldilocks answer choice C. So let's plug in 2 as x in the equation. Solving it out, we see that this equals negative 4 over negative 1, or 4. This is not the same as 8 over 6. Instead, it is too small. x needs to be bigger for both the numerator and denominators to be larger. So let's go ahead and eliminate answer choice C, and also A and B. Now, let's go ahead and Goldilocks in answer choice D, x equals 10. Solving this out, we get 8 over 6, proving this equation correct. Answer choice D is the correct answer. Okay, time's up. Let's go over the answer together. Right away, let's Goldilocks in answer choice C, x equals 4. This results in 256, which is much larger than 64. This tells us that we need a smaller number as x. Therefore, let's eliminate C as well as D and E. Moving on, let's Goldilocks in answer choice B, x equals 3. We get 64, therefore B is correct. Alright, so to recap, when you come across a variable problem where the answer choices are all numerical values, instead of solving it, consider Goldilocking it. Start this strategy by first plugging in answer choice C and then moving up and down, adjusting until you find a number that is not too big and not too small, but just right. 